Hello again. I know it's been a while, but I'm back and I've got another bedroom makeover. This was my mom's old room. It was just out of date and in need of a facelift. She wanted a farmhouse vibe for the new look and I did my best to make that happen. So with saying that, let's get to work. I like to start all of my projects out by removing any fixtures and adding in temporary lighting. This just ensures that nothing gets damaged and it also provides a better working light. Now, because this room had the same gorgeous popcorn ceiling as the rest of the house, it would have to go. However, I wasn't about to remove another popcorn ceiling, so instead I covered it with a faux shiplap and beams. Now, when I started marking out everything, I realized that my center light was not so center. So I fixed that and then marked out the locations of new pot lights as well as where the beams would lie. Unfortunately, I realized that my joists were actually running parallel to my beams. This meant that I'd have nothing to screw into. So I took these little pieces of wire, poked holes along my lines, and shoved them up into the attic space. This will allow me to go into the attic and see where my lines are so that I can add blocking and have something to screw into. I also did this for the pot lights so that I could take some wire up with me and drop it off at each location. Now, if you're gonna have to go into your attic, I'd recommend picking one of these up. Not only will they protect you from the insulation, but they look pretty sweet. These are the supports for the beams. I just took a 2x6 and ripped them down to be 4 inches wide. I then got the help of my mom and secured them into the ceiling. Because of the price of shiplap, I instead resorted to using 1 8 inch thick MDF instead. I ripped them down into 6 inch wide pieces and made a gazillion of them. I then took a laser level to ensure that they would all be straight and mounted my first line. Once I had that, I took a loony to separate them and began mounting the rest. If you don't have a loony, you could always use a toonie, and if you don't have a toonie, well, my condolences. Once all the pieces were installed, they were painted, and then I actually took a sharpie and ran it in between every single dividing line. It was quite the pain, but I think it was worth it. Because I was using such a thin piece of MDF, I found that the lines weren't looking that nice. However, with the accented sharpie, they really started to pop. I then drilled out my pot light holes. For this, I just took a four and a quarter inch hole saw centered between the beams. Because my wire was already ran, this made it very quick and easy. To construct the beams, I used three pieces of 1x6. One piece would have both edges beveled, and the other two would just have one edge beveled. I then took some clamps, wood glue, and brad nails, and created a sort of U out of them. This would slide over the previously installed 2x6. Of course not all my corners came out perfect, so I put some wood glue in the gaps and then took a shank of a screwdriver and closed them all up. The beams were then sanded and stained and put into place. In order to get these to fit over the 2x6s, I simply pounded them in with my fists like a Neanderthal. Once they were up, I took some brad nails and really made sure that they were secure. And let me tell you, these things are going nowhere.
To hide the seam where the beams meet, I just took some leftover MDF, ripped it down to size, and then painted it black. And it actually does the trick. With the ceilings pretty much completed at this point, I could then move on to the rest of the room. Here I'm making a barn door. This is just 8 inch wide tongue and groove boards which I glued and clamped together. Now I didn't have any actual clamps so I just used some cable ties instead. Once everything had a chance to dry, I took a skill saw and cut down the top and bottom to get it completely flat. I then started adding the trim around the door and I actually had to cheat it a little bit here. I didn't make my door wide enough so I just had these parts overhang and that gave me the width that I needed. Just don't tell anybody. With the assembly complete and dry I then took wood filler, let that dry, then sanded and stained. The original plan for the electrical was to have wall sconces similar to my bedroom. Now I did end up changing this to pendant lights because I didn't like the overall feel of the wall sconces, but the wiring is pretty similar uh, regardless. So I start by cutting out both the holes for my lights and the boxes. At each side of the bed you'll have both a switch and a plug, and the switch will control the light directly above. I had to drill holes in between each stud space in order to get my drill in there and be able to actually get my wire from one side to the other. I take a wire from the existing outlet and use that to power up both of my boxes. Then I take a wire from each light box and bring that down to the switch box. I then install all of my devices and then tie in to the existing circuit in the room. Make sure Anytime you're working on electricity, you turn power off. My mom picked up these little bedside tables but they were clearly way too short so I opted to make them into floating tables much like my room. I had to cut down the legs and then reattach them and in order to mount them I actually used a piece of plywood. I was able to get one stud with each however I also had to use a toggle bolt. And here is the process of changing a wall sconce into a pennant light. It's pretty straightforward. You have to drill out the hole for where your light will be. And in order to get through the top plate, you're gonna have to drill a hole higher up closer to the, the ceiling of the wall. You drill a hole through the top plate and then fish your wire from the switch box all the way up to the light.
surprise, <laughs> I bet you didn't see this one coming. Uh, I just wanted to take a second to say thank you. Your support, positive comments, all the feedback has been incredibly encouraging and I just really didn't expect so much kindness. In terms of moving forward, I realized there was a bit of a gap between this and the last video. That was just due to a very strict lockdown in my area, which fingers crossed is now hopefully done with. So if you enjoyed this video, you found some sort of inspiration, uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment, whatever. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one.